Bilene, thank you very much for joining us. And I want to start here with your administration saying the Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, initiated this conflict. First, if you could tell us why do you think they're doing it? What is it that they want? Do they want to resume power? Thank you very much, Arthel. Um, I, it's a very critical question to provide context that you have just lodged. Um, the TPLF um, is a brutal, tyrannical regime that had been dominating the politics, the economy, and the military of uh, the Ethiopian space uh, since the early 90s. Uh, prior to that, they were an insurgency group and a rebel force that was uh, engaged in uh, uh, several years of war trying to topple the previous regime before they came into power. Um, in 2018, following right, so a Ms. wide Ms. popular I, I, I do yes. apologize. I, I want to get a sure. lot covered here. I don't have time to review their entire CV, but as I said, I asked you, you mentioned that they were in power, and that's why I asked, do you think that they want to resume power? Is that what they're after? Definitely, there is a desire to resume power for the international community. That's not what they're saying. They're lodging a complaint that what they want to do is support the Tigrayan population. But um, Ethiopia has dealt with three wars in the past 30 years, and the common denominator has been TPLF. So now Prime Minister Abiy has asked citizens to take up arms to block TPLF from advancing to Djibouti and to Addis Ababa, the capital. Uh, he went to the front lines recently to confront TPLF, saying, quote, we won't flinch till we bury the enemy and ensure Ethiopia's freedom. Ethiopia is on the verge of collapse, and Prime Minister Abiy, as you well know, has promoted a platform of unity. So is, is this what the prime minister wants on his watch for his people? I mean, is Mr. Abiy doing everything in his power to find a diplomatic solution to stop this horrible civil war? Arthel, the characterization of Ethiopia about to collapse is not true. This is something that's peddled by a certain corner. Um, no, no, ma'am. This the, is from the State Department of the United States. I understand. But uh, just to give also context, uh, the conflict right now is contained to the northern part of the country. TPLF have escalated it into the Afar and um, uh, Amhara regions, which are also in the northern part of the country. Uh, what the prime minister has been doing has is been trying to protect the people uh, of Ethiopia from this um, uh, overt threat that the TPLF has been waging on the people of Ethiopia for the past year, for the past three years, and also over the past 27 years that they've been ruling. Indeed, he is a unit fire and uh, any of the rhetoric and any of the gestures that he has been engaged in over the past uh, three years prior to the altercation last year has been a peace offering the and uh, a, a manner of engaging with the TPLF for them to also uh, be part of an inclusive process yet this is something that they have outright rejected on several locations before yeah but, at this point but in time yeah, unfortunately, it, it, it ha it's not working. So, I mean, is the TPLF stronger, more strategic, more savvy, more clever than the Op Ethiopian National Defense Force? That wouldn't be the case, because what you have witnessed over the past two weeks since the prime minister um, headed to the front to lead the troops from the front is a seizure of, uh, or reversal of all of the, the gains that the TPLF has made. Uh, the TPLF is beginning to weaken. It, uh, it's a clear um, that they're also starting to retreat as well with um, these gains that have been made. Uh, the Ethiopian people, uh, the prime minister has got wide popular support. The government has got wide popular support. And through this unity, there is an effort to make sure that the TPLF is not a threat for the unity of Ethiopia. Meanwhile, more than two million people have been forced from their homes. I heard you say that there is perhaps some sort of, uh, you know, advancement towards the direction of unification, but you've got thousand people who are dead. Now, this is even though, Bilene, that in the past four years, up to 2020, the United States has provided $4.2 billion in development and humanitarian aid to the Ethiopian people. More recently, the Biden-Harris administration and Congress provided tens of millions of dollars in new development assistance. And yet there is widespread famine in Tigray. Ninety percent of the population there depends on aid. Up to 900,000 people are facing famine. 900,000. The population of San Francisco is 875,000. So I ask you, why is humanitarian relief not getting to these people who so desperately need it? 
So as I was just um, stating earlier, I mean, over the past year, uh, until the unilateral ceasefire and the National Defense Forces withdrew from the Tigray region, uh, the government has been providing up to 70 percent of humanitarian assistance. Um, since the National Defense Forces withdrew, there hasn't been any presence of uh, National Defense Forces or any conflict within the Tigray region. This has spilled over into the Amhara and Afar regions through the uh, active uh, belligerence of the TPLF. Uh, now, with regards to humanitarian assistance, uh, the TPLF has been a sore um, obstacle. Number one, because they want to politicize this and they want to international this issue, internationalize this issue. As we know, um, you know, issues of famine, issues of genocide, issues of rape are international issues, and they have been uh, putting this as a political agenda to gain the attention and sympathies of the international community, which so, they have done but, so. But, but let me let me jump in only because I've got a short time, sure. and I really want people sure. care about Ethiopia. Just so you'll know, that's where we're coming from with this. And and so you, you keep mentioning how powerful the TPLF is. Uh, Mr. Mr. Abi is the prime minister, okay? He is the leader. So I want to find out if you can tell me, does he have a plan? What is it that he's willing to do to end this horrible civil war? What is it that you want the world, the world is watching Ethiopia right now and pulling for peace. Will Prime Minister Abi succeed in achieving peace? Prime Minister Abiy has got a track record of achieving peace and bringing harmony among the communities. Uh, this blemish and the way that it has been characterized has been the narrative of the TPLF that, uh, you know, airwaves have taken over the international community. He is committed to peace, but he also has a responsibility as the commander in chief of the National Defense Forces, as well as the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, to ensure that state order is uh, maintained, which the TPLF is a clear threat to. So alongside the goal of ensuring that the TPLF are pushed back into the Tigray region. There's processes that have been laid out to ensure that any political contestations, there is a space to address them adequately. And nobody more than the prime minister, more than the Ethiopian people and the Ethiopian government are much more concerned about their country. So I think the clear message to the international community is stand by the legitimately elected democratic government of Ethiopia in ensuring that we're overpassing this uh, turbulent period. We, we are pulling for Ethiopia, trust me. Bilanay Seyum, uh, we wish you the best. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Arthur.